We are finally quieting down after a series of solar storms has rattled us over the last couple weeks. But old region 2699 is going to be rotating back into Earth view here in the next couple days. Is it going to give us another round of trouble? Those stories and more in the news this week. We're finally quieting down after a series of solar storms over the past couple weeks have bathed Earth in active to even minor storm conditions. It hasn't been so busy as to cause a lot of aurora down at mid-latitudes, but it has kept your aurora photographers at high latitudes pretty busy. But meanwhile, most of that is now rotated to the sun's backside. We don't have any more fast wind. It's kind of all gone. What we do have is region 2700, which has been a little bit active. It actually fired off a mini solar storm here just in the last day or so, but it most likely isn't going to cause much of a disturbance at Earth. We might get a little bit of something the beginning of next week, but like not much to bother with. The real story though is that old region 2699 is going to be rotating back into Earth view here in the next couple days and it should boost the solar flux up again so you amateur radio operators and emergency responders you finally can get out of poor conditions and back into marginal conditions for amateur radio propagation. Switching to our MFLAR threat meter, you can see the last time region 2699 was in Earth view, it actually fired off some decent sized solar flares, including launching a solar storm at us, which was one of those storms that we've had to contend with over the past couple weeks. But as it rotated to the sun's backside, you can see the X-ray flux here kind of diminishing and diminishing. That meant the solar flux also diminished, and it put us back down into the poor conditions for amateur radio propagation. And that's pretty much where we've stayed. Now region 27 700 has fired off a couple solar flares, but it really hasn't brightened things up enough to pop us back into marginal conditions. But this isn't going to last because region 2699 is going to rotate back into Earth view again and it's going to brighten our day. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see it's clear back from the 15th, we started to get active conditions from that series of solar storms. One of them was an eruption from region 2699 the last time it came around. And easily over those two weeks, we went from unsettled to active. We even bumped up to minor storm conditions on several occasions. So you, uh, aurora photographers have been extremely busy. We did get a little peekaboo aurora uh, down at mid latitudes, but it didn't last all that long. But Pretty much everywhere else in the world at high latitudes, we got some decent aurora. Now, since then, things have settled down and settled down, and they will likely continue to settle down uh, over the next week or so. We might get a little bit of a disturbance at the beginning of next week from that mini solar storm, but probably not. Things should continue to quiet down to normal conditions over the next week. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can immediately see is old region 2699 glowing like a beacon in the night. It's the only region on the sun's backside, and it's not quite as active as it was uh, last time it was in Earth view, but it is still glowing. So this is good news for you amateur radio operators, because as this region rotates into Earth view here in the next few days, it will up the solar flux and bring uh, amateur radio propagation back to marginal conditions. Now what else we have is a long finger-like coronal hole that's also going to be rotating here into Earth view and then the next, oh, you know, maybe week or so, and it will rotate into the Earth strike zone in about 10 days to two weeks and we could get yet another solar storm. And this series of solar storms that have hit us over the past two weeks have brought incredible aurora views all around the world. I can't possibly show all of the shots that have been sent to me, but you aurora uh, field reporters from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for sending in so many inspirational shots. In many cases, I know you guys braved the freezing cold. I know many of you have gotten no sleep over the past two weeks to bring us some of these stunning views. And many of them have been incredibly inspirational. And I'll begin with a surprise wedding proposal in Finland. And she said yes. And there have been gorgeous views in Norway and in Sweden and Russia. They've even dropped down to the UK. Here's some from Scotland and Shetland. They've even made it to Iceland. Now, over the pond, we've seen gorgeous aurora in Canada. This is the Yukon. 
and we've seen it in Ontario and Manitoba, in Saskatchewan, and of course in Alberta. And we've even had flights over Canada going uh, across the pond to the Atlantic and back. We've seen beautiful aurora from the wingtips of airlines as well as the cockpits. Now, the aurora even dipped down to the United States. We saw it in Maine and Minnesota, in Michigan, and even dipped down to Wisconsin. And then down south, we saw it in New Zealand and Tasmania. Switching to your solar storm and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are coming down from that series of solar storms that have hit us over the past couple weeks. So as that, we're expecting to get calmer and calmer as time goes on. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with about a 15 to 20 percent chance of a minor storm, but most likely things will remain unsettled. At mid latitudes, we're expecting unsettled to normal conditions with only about a 10 to 15 percent chance of active conditions. And again, this should continue to quiet down and quiet down. You might get a little bit of a disturbance from that mini solar storm that had just been launched at the beginning of next week, but most likely you're still going to see everything in the green. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to solar flares. We do have Region 2700 that's firing off a couple B-class flares, and it's even launched a mini solar storm at us, but it's just not been enough to raise the solar flux level beyond the poor uh, radio propagation conditions. But you amateur radio operators should be going, yay, because old Region 2699 is about to rotate back into Earthview, it will likely be renumbered Region 2701, and with it is going to come some boost, well-needed boost of the solar flux to bump us back into marginal conditions, and they should happen before the end of the week. So the space weather this week is finally calming down after a series of solar storms has kept us pretty busy over the last couple weeks. So your war photographers, you can finally relax and get up, catch up on some much needed sleep and even recharge your batteries. Now you amateur radio operators and GPS operators, you've probably been hating life the last couple weeks with this uh, solar storming on the night side especially. And you amateur radio operators have the added problem of poor solar flux on the day side. So radio propagation has been pretty bad. But you have something to smile about because Region 2699 is rotating back into Earth view here in the next couple days, and up with it comes the solar flux. It may even switch uh, amateur radio propagation on like a light switch, so you can enjoy some decent radio propagation over the next two weeks. And both you amateur radio operators and uh, GPS operators will be happy because it doesn't look like Region 2699 this time around is going to be an M-Flare player at all. So no radio blackouts. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.